is my is the mic on is this working all right uh, to -do -to -do -to -do. okay i've been doing a lot of uh, the metals but i keep getting asked for like the the miners what's up with the gdx jdxj uh, silver miners sil siLj the juniors uh, I went on a tangent that I preferred just looking at uh, AEM and uh, Newmont, NEM, so uh, Agnico, Gold Corp, and uh, Newmont, as uh, they had data that dated back to the uh, 70s. And it's easy for me. I love doing uh, back testing and historical and really see how they behave in previous uh, precious metals bull cycles. But uh, look, the majority of people, they, they like uh, JDX, they look at that, that's what they were playing today, or SIL, so I think I'm going to do podcast today, uh, seeing where I see those, uh, try to use multiple of my techniques, um, it's all about the weight of evidence, trying to always look at different angles, not just uh, one angle, like is it above a moving average, but try to use different TA techniques, and maybe sometimes look at the macros, uh, revolving around the uh, precious metal sector. So you could have a really strong weight of evidence. You could sleep at night knowing that you're not going to succumb emotionally to uh, whipsaws, to uh, daily pullbacks, and that you're on the good side of uh, the precious metals uh, oil bull run. First off, this is the my um, the, the chicken uh, come for the egg uh, theory. For the precious metals, uh, since it started in, uh, in 2018, uh, the, the latest bull run, this is the way I see it. Market's correct. Rate cut probabilities increase. That means uh, if you go on the CME website and they look at the futures for the 30-day uh, Fed fund rate, as soon, every time the market pulls back and it technically does a hard pullback, those rates increase. They haven't ha actually happened, but they went, let's say, from 20% to 40%, and you could actually draw... Uh, technical analysis lines on that the graphing of the probabilities and when they break out that's what fuels and then you have a precious metals breakout and if you look at the chart uh, you, even the metal was preparing for that you had a consolidation pattern a, bear, a bull flag or whatever and they essentially broke out so right now when i see the spx super high uh, we've seen also that the metals are expecting it to to go down uh, to have rate cuts right now the the rate cuts are at zero for the next few months next few months the chances of having rate cuts but i see this as fuel so the metals are actually preparing for a correction in the markets not because uh, markets go down and there's a they go to safe safe haven but i believe more because if the markets go down uh, the the fed or the market's gonna start pricing in rate cuts and that's going to give a better um that's going to give lower yields on the U.S. dollar, so it's going to be more attractive to buy gold, and the, the flow of money is going to go to uh, exiting fiat currencies towards uh, towards gold. So here it is. I did this chart today. Um, that's the, the fuel, the, the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average for the SPX. You see we're in pretty high. It's okay. It could stay high, but if it breaks down, then I see some support here breaking down. So that's fuel as the percentage of uh, stocks go below their 50-day moving average. Here below their 200-day moving average, uh, the SPX should go down in price, and that's going to fuel the next uh, breakout in uh, the uh, metals uh, market. Before I go to the miners, I just want another um, um, macro just to see the health of the metals underneath in the precious metals market. Everybody's looking at the gold-silver ratio. What I've noticed here, this is when the gold ratio was at uh, super duper highs at 92, and then it, it started going down and then pulled back. It pulled back 61% uh, golden ratio, pulled back very high. Silver and gold, yes, they did pull back around 61% down here, but as the gold silver ratio stayed at those high levels, close to that 61% pullback, silver and uh, gold have actually been outperforming and refusing to go down back to their 61% level. They've actually stuck around now. They're 38% from their from their highs right here. And the goal's actually, uh, well, I had a 23% pullback, so it's actually very close to, to their breakout levels. Silver is moving up. So still in between uh, the breakout levels and uh, 
that pullback but you see the relative strength of silver and gold as the uh, gold silver ratio so when the gold ratio starts going down again we're just going to be it's going down going to be going down from uh, metals being at a higher price and the gold silver ratio being at a higher uh, ratio and that's just so much more fuel to, to fuel the next rally up all right let's go for um, jdx and the jdxj as a post I did on a gold tent. Uh, sometimes I do more or slightly different commentary when I go there. You can look at the comments of people uh, following uh, uh, following us there. And uh, it's um, a little bit more uh, slower pace than Twitter. So you get time to really see different angles of different people, different views of the precious metals market and anything that revolves around it. So it's um, it's good to go elsewhere than Twitter sometimes or stock tweets just to get uh, more versatile uh, information to make you uh, more confident in your trade. Okay, this is so simple. I tried when I made that chart. I just tried to make it simple. Back to my monthly chart, noise reduced. I, I'm starting seeing these type of bottoms, multi-year bottoms, low, higher low, um, testing, defining the breakout level. Right now we're consolidating right below that breakout level. Right here we were close, close. So this is my range, thirty dollars, and it's if it closes above thirty dollars, I'm pretty sure it's going to close above thirty-one dollars. Inclining twelve-month moving average. Uh, I could zoom in on the daily chart, and you'll see that that wick probably getting people getting scared. Oh no, it's the end. Uh, the the gold miners aren't joining the party. Gold miners always lag the well, not always, but they lag the metals usually. And this, the JDX, is on the brink of joining the the bull party for the precious metals. And look at that. This is a vacuum, so not much. It went so down so much so fast. There's not a lot of uh, all the sellers. If they didn't sell here on the way down, they sold here over this consolidation period. So this is probably going to be a vacuum all the way to my target of uh, 4250, guys. Uh, right here could probably start hitting some support, some resistance. But this is going to be a vacuum. It's going to be a wild ride. I believe once we close above that 31 level, it's going to move very fast. It doesn't get more clean cut than that. The juniors, you see, juniors, same thing, same type of setup. Here I, I had that picture of the arc. Uh, viol first violent move up. No, that's not the good one, guys. Then sideways move, starting to hit, starting to define that uh, the right hemisphere, first touch. Oh, that's in the second touch confirmed. Yeah, survived it. Consolidation pattern, 12 month moving average, trying to under pushing it up. See that wick? Oh no, the arc's gonna break. Well, not yet. January's not over yet, but right now it's above that breakout line. So that means uh, the monthly defined resistance turn support has survived. It's a wall. And this is the catch up that has to do. So right now there's gonna be a vacuum. All the way to 50. No, that's not the final target. The final target is 76, and here's the vacuum. There's not going to be much uh, resistance here. Here we will get resistance, which is previous support and resistance. So this is how much the junior miners. That's why people say there's more leverage. There's more. Uh, you're going to make more 10 baggers or five baggers in the juniors. That's because it starts from a little lower, and when the other ones break out, it gets its turn to shine, and uh, off it goes to the races, guys. So that is, for gold, guys, it's looking pretty, pretty sweet uh, for the miners. All right, for the silver miners, SIL, let's go and let's do it with, on TradingView interactively. And you'll get to see also how I like to build um, my final results that you see in, um, in my tweets or my posts on Gold Tent. Often I start just a chart like that, super simple, 12-month moving average. I could even remove it, but I like it. Because it tells me if I'm above it, I could go long. If it's below it, I'll never go long. You see that trend? It's actually, instead of removing the 12-month edge, you could remove the price. It's so clear. Downtrend, uptrend, downtrend, uptrend. One year moving average, very powerful. If you want difficulty sleeping at night, just know that the 12-month moving average is in your favor. And the volatility on the smaller time frames should always resolve or have a higher chance of resolving upwards because of that 12-month moving average, that pressure going upwards. So the first thing I'd like to do, I pick up uh, the TSI, thanks fully from uh, Gold Tent. 
right here bullish crossover below the zero line and as long as the price action goes up we're going to start going in bullish mode right there and that's going to be confirmed probably when we break out above right here when we break out above that 51 level let me stretch that So this is what's kind of cool with the um, with the SIL miners. The highs of 2016 are the the wall, the previous support turn resistance from the the, the end of the bull market in the the 2001 to 2011 12 bull market. So there's not much of a vacuum there. The vacuum we're, we're going to leave it right right here of this uh, bottom all the way to that 50 150 level 52 level that is the target right there arrow going up here even here if i zoom in sideways move close to 12 month moving average great buying opportunities here broke out actually confirmed breakout last month and in the current month some price action a little bit below that breakout line but not much and after that the price action now is starting to uh, get bought and we're probably going to close the month above that breakout line confirming that a uh, the support, uh, the resistance turn support held. You could even add a super duper arc. Doo -doo -doo. So the arc, often you get to see it on the downtrend. You start identifying, you start looking, oh, okay, here it is going down, it's slowing down. Then you see, oh, one touch here, a few touches here. And after that, the arc really completes when you um, you start having a it starts going up and you start touching the right hemisphere so here's the angle of the descent slowing down first violent uh, move up define defining the the resistance that one usually doesn't pan out going back and starting to hit like a, a rock rolling down the hill poof hits a wall and the arc supports it slows down its downwards momentum then you get a usually a second try here then the 12-month average is below it. The arc is below it, going upwards, and that is the uh, gives you a visual representation of um, the stage four uh, end sideways move, and then after that the the ascent. So here's the the price action. Here's where the money's to be made from entering here at the end of the month. It closes above. You're good. And after that, target probably 51 right here. And then we're going to have to see how, how it looks like uh, when once that target's reached, guys. Okay, what about SIL? S-I-L-J. Okay, the juniors have some leftover uh, drawings. Same thing on the way down. First hit second hit okay now decide to bounce back up first violent uh, thrust up starting to find that monthly defined resistance sideways move hitting the right hemisphere and then maybe eventually we're going to maybe get a second test here but if we don't this could go high as fast usually the angle of entry is the uh, same angle of uh, exit and how does this look like breakout confirmed last month even like lower here See, I define my breakout levels based on uh, closes. So when I see a red candle the next month that it gapped up, it's actually the close of the green candle. That's that's where the month ended, closed. So for me, that's what where the market decided that it was important to close. So that's where I I, I draw my resist my resist my resistance line. Sorry, but you see, when we we had that strong month, we just override any doubt by closing above price action went down below you see that wick oh no now that support holding that price action back up now you have the 12 month moving average below it now you have this monthly defined support below it and here is the move this is actually a great entry if you buy here on fomo you're far away from the 12 month moving average uh pat uh, let's see let's add it right now two, 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 two. distance from 12 month moving average here would have been probably a uh, fear of missing out type of scenario, 20-30% away from the moving average. What you want to do is, okay, it broke out, it proved it could go out. Let's wait and see. And then pulls back down, 
close to that uh, 12 month moving average and then you have a better low risk entry because your sell stop you could play, place it below that candle and now you have you have confirmation that that, that support is going to hold so here's the move all the way up here to 18 dollars. that's my target for the miners so there you go a uh, few techniques always try to look at different angles look at a little bit of the the macros robbing the complex uh, precious metals complex and that's the beauty i've noticed of uh, dealing with the primarily the precious metals complex is you get to master or you get to um, uh, that ecosystem you get to look at all the charts it's not super huge it's pretty stable it's been there for a long time the cycles are pretty clear and uh, you get to uh, have a higher probability moves than uh, than otherwise because you, you have an ensemble a great weight of evidence to uh, have your positions guys all right that's it thanks for watching ciao guys Bye-bye.